Welcome to this presentation here on BizJet TV, all about pilot fatigue. You've asked me to do this and so we've prepared this and we've actually split it into two parts. This is part one where we're going to be talking about the problem. Is it a real problem and what's been happening uh, in the piloting world with air safety and that and how pilot fatigue is playing a role in this. My name is Fabrizio Sapone, I'm an airline transport pilot. I've flown for private jet outfits, a number of airlines around the world, I've got thousands of hours and so I'm going to... Uh, bring you my perspective on all this and show you the research the data about pilot fatigue and that's what this episode is about so let's get into it off we go so welcome to this presentation here about pilot fatigue this is part one so the question is is pilot fatigue an actual problem and this is what we're going to address in this first part about pilot fatigue now, the International Civil Aviation Organization defines fatigue as a physiological state of reduced mental or physical performance capability. This results in sleep loss or extended wakefulness, circadian phase or workload, mental and or physical activity that can impair crew members' alertness and ability to safely operate an aircraft or perform safely related duties. Now, a fatigued pilot is equal to a drunk pilot. Now, uh, research done in Karolinska University in Sweden by Professor Torbjorn Ackerstedt, as you can see here in the photo. Um, he said that most people are able to stay alert for 16 hours during the daytime, but that reduces at night. It's been well established scientifically uh, that the impairments a pilot experiences landing a plane at 5 in the morning are the equivalent of having a blood alcohol level of 0.0%. So, basically... A fatigued pilot is like a drunk pilot. So the question is, do you want to get on a plane flown by a drunk pilot? So, is it a growing problem? The amount of fatigue-related safety accidents has increased, and crews now attribute operational errors like landing on the wrong runway or misreading fuel to stress and lack of sleep. It's been determined to be the probable cause of between 21 and 23% of major aviation accident investigations during the past two decades. Now, this is some research done um, in India about um, on fly, pilots flying domestically and regionally. And the survey's findings highlight the following points. 66% of pilots acknowledge falling asleep in the air without waking up the rest of the crew. 54.2% of the pilots reported being severely, excessively sleepy during the day. Morning departures were cited as a primary source of fatigue by 74% of the pilots and 31% reported experiencing a close call due to fatigue-related problems while flying. Now, the dangers of fatigue, skill accuracy, decision-making skills, memory sharpness, judgment proficiency, reaction time, situation awareness, all things that are uh, severely reduced when a pilot is fatigued. So how bad are the consequences of fatigue for flight safety? If you think that sounds like a bad combination of the controls of an aircraft, you are correct. Unfortunately, fatigue contributes to a high percentage of aircraft accidents. Most sources cite that human factors cause approximately 80% of accidents and fatigue accounts for something like 20% of those. On the one hand, the aircraft operating environment is a fatigue-induced environment. Long days combined with physical and psychological stresses. The environment is noisy and cramped and the tasks are boring and repetitive. As romantic as flying a plane is, the minutiae of line pilot life consists of less glamour. And I can confirm that, having flown for the airlines for a number of years, uh, also with private jets, that this is the case. And this contributes to fatigue. Now, the pilot's lifestyles. Now, it's not just about how many hours the pilots are flying. It's also what they do when they're not flying. It says here, the crew only flies for eight hours in 24 hours but they pay little attention to the crew's living situation during the other 16 hours. Are they commuting to work? By their heading on other flights to their departure point? Are they catching a nap while in an FBO lounge? Has a schedule changed recently requiring a shift in their circadian sleep cycles? These are all things that aren't really taken into consideration when they make the rules as far as how many hours a pilot can fly. Come here, Delta Connection Flight 5191, when we're going to be looking at a number of accidents where fatigue played a key role. This is a Bombardier CRJ-1000ER. It crashed during takeoff from Kentucky on route to Atlanta, taxiing during the pre-dawn hours. The crew lined up and attempted to depart from runway 26 instead of their assigned runway 22. Unfortunately, runway 26 was too short for the aircraft, and so the aircraft ran off the runway before becoming airborne, 
all 47 passengers and two of the three crew members were killed. So they took off from the wrong runway and they say that fatigue was a key factor in this mistake that then caused uh, the accident. Colgan Air, Continental, flight 3407. This is departing Newark, New Jersey at Bombardier Q400 turboprop. Um, and everyone on the plane, four crew members and 45 passengers, and one person on the ground were killed. The investigation discovered that while the aircraft lost speed and stalled, the crew improperly responded to cockpit warnings and attempted to pull up instead of lowering the angle of attack and building speed. Tiredness was cited as one major factor. So again, we see that fatigue played a role in this accident too, killing quite a few people. Here we are, a private jet. We've covered this accident actually here on BizJet TV. Um, this was in 2002, taken off from Birmingham, UK, a Challenger 604, uh, inbound to Bangor, Maine. Uh, number of causes here. Number one, the crew did not ensure the wings were clear of frost prior to takeoff. Number two, reduction of the wing stall angle of attack due to the surface roughness associated with frost contamination to below that at which the stall protection system was effective. And three, possible impairment of crew performance combined by the effects of a non-prescriptive drug, jet lag and fatigue. Incidentally enough, on this accident here, all the pilots were very experienced. So that's another factor there. So here's some very experienced crew. Fatigue caused them to um, make these mistakes, which caused the accident. Again, even if you've got the best pilot in the world, if they are fatigued, it's like that guy's being drunk. And even the best of pilots, when they're drunk, can end up making this kind of mistake. Medair Learjet 35A, uh, taking off from San Diego. Uh, causes the failure of the flight crew to maintain terrain clearance during VFR departure resulted in controlled flight into terrain um, and this and they said the accident the pilot's fatigue was a contributing factor even here in this one too then we've got Air India Express we talked about Indian aviation uh, they have uh, serious problems with their rostering and uh, pilot fatigue in India right now and it says here uh, in this case well the aircraft overrun the runway. The captain's failure to discontinue the unstabilized approach and his persistence in continuing with the landing, in spite of availability of adequate rest period prior to the flight, the captain was in prolonged sleep during the flight, which could have led to sleep inertia. As a result of relatively short periods of time between his awakening and the approach, it possibly led to impaired judgment. So he kind of just <laughs> woke up and then went, went to do the landing, came in high, ended up on the end of the runway, and 166 people died. Fly Dubai, this is an interesting one. Incorrect aircraft configuration and blue piloting, the subsequent loss of the pilot and command situation and awareness in nighttime. This resulted in a loss of control of the aircraft and its impact with the ground. Contributing factors were turbulence and gusty wind, the pilot's confusion, lack of psychological readiness for a second go around, and the possible operational tiredness of the crew at the worst possible time in terms of circadian rhythms. Now, again, uh, here, the airplane was in bad weather. You know, pilots are trained. We're trained in the simulator. We're trained in all different scenarios. But, you know, when this, these situations happen, you really need to be in, in the best possible peak state in order to perform at your best. And if you're tired, if you're fatigued, you're not going to react the way you were trained. And consequently, the accidents happen. Again, let's go back to the analogy there of, you know, a fatigued pilot is like a drunk pilot. So no matter how much training you received, no matter what experience you had, like in the Challenger 604 crash we just looked at, you know, these guys are going to put the airplane into a very dangerous situation and probably kill everybody in the process. So let's look at um, what Southwest Airlines have been talking about here. The Pilots Association has said fatigue is both acute and cumulative, has become Southwest Airlines' number one safety threat. A lot of our delays and issues that we're having have to do more with scheduling and connecting pilots with airplanes. It is inefficient scheduling processes that are affecting when we work in a very dynamic environment. Now, a lot of this has happened as we've come out of lockdown. A lot of pilots uh, did actually take early retirement, so there is a pilot shortage. So the airlines are working their pilots more than usual. It says here, Southwest Airlines Pilot Union said, uh, fatigue skyrocketed last fall, skyrocketed last fall, including a 600% spike in October and another staggering 330% increase last month. Um, and so they're having fatigue problems also in the world.
Aviation Safety Reporting System. I'm going to look at two of these reporting systems and we're going to look at what we define as incidents. These actually didn't end up being accidents. Both the reporting systems we're going to be looking at are anonymous. So when the pilot experiences something, they can file a report. They remain anonymous. That goes into the system and the data is collected. Um, and this is used then as feedback to sort of improve flight safety across the aviation world. Last year, pilots from all carriers filed about 60 reports of mistakes other than incidents involving fatigue to the Federal Aviation Safety Reporting System. Reports are posted to federal website anonymously without identifying names of airlines. So this is an interesting one. Uh, here's just an example. Both of us were yawning and eye rubbing halfway through our six plus hour flight. I was physically unable to keep up. One captain wrote in November, despite having appropriate average sleep the night before. Here's an example here on a Challenger 600. Main entrance door came open on initial takeoff roll at 60 knots. The door contacted the wrong way, at which time the takeoff was aborted. And when they looked into why this happened, uh, they're saying that the pilots were fatigued. And that was another reason why this happened. Another example here, fractional ownership, private jet. Um, they had a problem. It says here they were briefed a visual approach for one with two, three right. Tower cleared them for two, three right. They went, landed, vacated the runway, and then discovered they had actually landed on runway two, three left. So good job. There were no, um, the runway wasn't shut or there were obstacles on that runway or whatnot. So again, this is an incident, not an accident. And the pilot said that the contributing factor to this mistake they made was the fact that they were fatigued and tired. Also, air traffic control played a role in this too. Um, and it says here, the tower didn't correct us. that We should have landed on the right runway. Um, so that's another factor there. Chirp is in the UK, Confidential Human Factors Incident Reporting Program. Um, and they have been tracking these similar type of incidents as the ASRS have. And in the last year, we see here fatigue is number two on the list. The first contributing factor is duty. Uh, but, you know, duty could be placed, you know, fatigue could be inside the duty. And the fact that these pilots are working longer hours, again, because of the pilot shortage. So um, these are kind of the problems. I've experienced pilot fatigue myself. Where one night over the Indian Ocean, I fell asleep, woke up about half an hour later to see my colleague snoring away in his chair. Uh, on the flight deck, I looked at the clock and realized that we'd both been out sleeping for the last 25 minutes. And so the question is, well, no one was flying the airplane during those 25 minutes. And we're very, very lucky that nothing actually happened during those 25 minutes. Now, this happened to me. It happens all the time. It's a problem that is actually growing. But what can you do if you own a private jet or you fly a private jet? Or you're an owner of a private jet. Now, I often talk here on Bishop TV that pilot safety uh, and the safety record of private aviation is 9.2 times worse than the airlines. Um, and uh, But your private jet operation can be a lot safer. And we're going to talk about what we can do as pilots to be safer, what you can do as a pilot owner to make sure that your pilots are safe and not fatigued. And this is what's going to be the subject of part two about pilot fatigue. Thank you.